My name is Brian Townsend. I work for Luxion, and our product is called Keyshot. It's real-time ray tracing, and it's fully CPU-based. There's no uh, 3D rendering that occurs on the GPU. And if you look over here, we have an 80-thread machine, and our software is utilizing all 80 threads and 100% of all of them. It's probably one of the few applications out there that can actually use that many cores this efficiently. And uh, basically what's in this machine are four Westmere EXs. There's 10 physical cores per chip and they're hyper-threaded. So essentially uh, 20 threads per chip. And what we have back here, this is Keyshot. And it is real-time ray tracing software and it's all scientifically accurate. And what we've done is made creating photorealistic images simple and fast. In the past, it's taken a lot of technical know-how and a lot of time to create a photorealistic image. Uh, but with the uh, introduction of Keyshot, that's changed everything. Uh, it comes with preloaded materials. I can easily uh, drag and drop materials from the uh, material library and into the interface, and you can see it updates very fast. Um, the materials are all scientifically accurate. For example, if I go here and take a look at the glass, I can double click on the glass. And this has a property here called index of refraction. Glass has an index of refraction of 1.5. So if I set that to that value, this is actually bending and distorting light the same exact manner that glass would. Water has an index of refraction of 1.33. So I can do that. And you see it distorts it just the way that uh, water would. Um, an index of refraction of air is a value of 1. So if I go ahead and set this value to 1, you see we get no distortion. Just like when we walk around in real life and we are surrounded by air, we don't see any distortion. So you can see that all the materials are scientifically accurate. And I can also adjust the slider, and that gives us an update of how much it's actually bending the light. Changing the color is very easy. I can click and drag, and everything happens and updates very quickly. Uh, oh no, it's all CPU based. Yeah, all CPU based. And, uh, and um, if you go in here to the environment tab, and I can drag and drop and change the lighting. And that changes right away. So this takes the complexity out of actually uh, creating realistic lighting for, uh, for an environment. Okay. And we can also do uh, depth of field. If I click on my camera tab here, and I go over, I can enable depth of field. I can pick my focus point. And now the camera is focused on this pond, and you'll see everything else becomes blurred out. And this calculates real 3D depth of field. Very cool. And that will resolve itself. And one of our latest uh, advancements in uh, our rendering technology is the ability to render what's called uh, subsurface scattering in real time. And this means that we can do translucent materials such as uh, skin, plants, things of that nature. And we debuted this at a conference called Seagraph. And what we're looking at here is basically the next generation of the same technology that uh, made the Avatar characters look the way they did in the movie Avatar. Our developer was contracted by Weta Digital to write the mathematical algorithms that uh, made the Avatar's character's skin look the way it did. These are those same algorithms, and he's since then improved them, so we're looking at the next generation technology. He's also worked on Lord of the Rings, and he did the skin for Gollum. That was the first time that translucent skin had been done in film, and he won an Academy Award for that achievement. And if we uh, zoom in here, stuff doesn't work. Let me, let me zoom in on the ear, so you can see the actual scattering of light beneath the surface. Okay. So you get 40 processors. So you can see the actual light scattering inside the ear there. And if I double click here, this shows the translucent material properties. And this is much, much simpler than any other rendering solution for creating a translucent material. And that's our goal behind Keyshot, is to do, to make it simple and fast. It works off of two colors. We have a diffuse color, which is the reflected color. And we have the transmission color, which is the color of light that's scattered beneath the surface of the material. So if I want to do Hulk skin, I can set my diffuse color to something like green. 
And even though my skin color is green, we're still simulating red blood beneath the surface of the skin, which is going to make this character look real and feel alive. Um, also, you can see how shiny his skin is here. Um, I can change that by increasing the roughness value over here. So if I increase the roughness, now his skin doesn't feel wet anymore. And as I mentioned, this is all done on the CPU because these algorithms are much too complex for us to utilize the GPU. Uh, the GPU just wouldn't be able to handle it. And then also, the amount of data that we can import. Um, since we're not going through VRAM, since we're not on the GPU, uh, we're only limited by um, the amount of RAM we have in our system. And RAM is cheap and easy to uh, put into a computer. So right now, this scene is utilizing half a gig of RAM. So essentially, we could continue to just import data uh, non-stop into this software. And I'll show you one screenshot before I uh, close out my presentation here. And this was taken this morning. Um, this is the most polys we've ever had into a scene at any one time. And this is 2.5 billion polys that we had loaded into the scene. It took a total of uh, 260 or so gigabytes of RAM to put this in. So you, you could never accomplish this on a GPU. Um, so even at 2.5 billion polys, which is the number up here, we were still getting 5.8 frames per second. So, uh, you know, that's one of, definitely one of the benefits of going with a CPU-based rendering solution and one of the major reasons that our company chose to utilize the CPU. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.